In this presentation, we will take a look at the process of the allocation of indirect expenses. You'll recall that we have a decentralized system. We're discussing a system where a company is breaking up into departments and providing responsibility for different departments. We then need to track the performance of each department, and we have two types of expenses that we're going to allocate to each department. The direct expenses, ones that we can track to that department directly, and the indirect expenses, those that we're going to have to allocate to those departments. And then, of course, the question is, well, how do we do that? How do we do this allocation process? In other words, we have an expense here that's going to be benefiting multiple segments, multiple divisions of the company. For example, if we had the maintenance service on the building, we would need to allocate that to the departments that the maintenance service is covering. And we might say, well, if there's three departments, we should just take the cost of maintenance, divide it by three. That would be one allocation method. A very simplified allocation method may be applicable in some cases. However, it might be the case that these three departments are different in nature. In other words, one might be larger or uh, than another. And therefore, it would be more appropriate for us to allocate on some other basis. We should allocate more to the larger department than the smaller department. Once we do that, we then need to decide, well, how are we going to do that? What's going to be a fair way for us to break out this cost of the maintenance, for example, to the three departments that are being covered by it? We're going to have to use some type of percentage method. And to do that, we'll typically use some type of activity base in order to allocate that. For example, if we're talking about maintenance, usually the square footage that is being covered is going to be a relevant activity base because it would seem reasonable that the, the maintenance would spend more time on the larger areas than the smaller areas. And if we use a proportion of square footage as a percentage to then allocate the cost between the departments, that seems like a fair way to go. However, the square footage might not be the case, might not be the best activity base to use for other types of activities for other things. And therefore, our goal then, when we have allocations such as this, is to determine what it is we're trying to allocate figure out what an appropriate activity base would be something that we can then use on a percentage basis to then use those related percentages to allocate out the cost so here's some common types of allocation bases activity bases common things that we would need to allocate out if we're allocating for example something like wages let's say we have someone that we're our pain that is going to be in charge of multiple different departments well then we might look at the hours worked per department to allocate out those wages. In other words, if we're talking about wages of individuals that are working in multiple different departments, then we can think and say, well, what would be a good activity base for us to use to apply out wages to multiple different departments? Well, if we know the hours that people have worked within different departments, we can use that on a ratio analysis. We can look at the hours. We can figure out the relative hours per department on a percentage basis in relation to the total, adding up to 100, of course, use that as our method of allocating out the wages to the departments in accordance with that ratio. If we're talking about something like rent, let's say we have these three departments that are all in the same building and we have to apply the rent. They all, of course, are using the rent in some way that we have to pay for the building. We want to apply that out to the departments in some way. Well, that would commonly be used. The floor space seems like a reasonable activity base there because clearly if you're talking about the rent, you would think that the square footage of the floor space would be something that would be reasonable for us to use as an activity base to then allocate out the cost of the rent to the departments because larger departments then would have more of the rent. Now, again, you could have differences here because you could say, and we'll look at some problems where we say, no, that's too simplified. What if the first floor is more highly valued than the second floor and the rent on the first floor would be more highly valued than the rent on the second floor it could be that uh, it would be more appropriate to have some bit more complex type of activity based allocation in something like that but you could see our goal here is to pick an appropriate activity base the floor space using the relative floor space between departments to get ratios percentages we can then use to allocate out the, the cost advertising so the advertising, we might have advertising for multiple different departments and we have to apply out the advertising budget to the, to the, multi, the costs to the multiple departments. Now, an, a common activity base there is sales revenue because there could be a, a correlation, of course, we hope that the advertising is 
is correlated in some way to the sales revenue. So we might look at the relative revenue generation, draw a percentages of the departments in revenue, use those percentages to then apply out to advertising. Now, once we get this concept down, we'll, we'll talk about this concept of how we do these percentages, then that becomes pretty systematic. Once we know uh, how to do that, we'll come up with these ratios. That'll be fairly easy. We just need to re realize that we, we can use different type of activity bases to run these ratios and we want to use the best activity base that's going to be driving uh, what the relative size, what the relative cost will be appropriately to the departments. So then we might have depreciation. We might have the building. What if we don't rent the building? We have depreciation on the building or let's say depreciation on equipment. So if we're talking about depreciation on equipment that's going to be used by multiple departments, then we might have the hours used per department. To do that, of course, we would have to track the hours that are being used for the piece of equipment. And then once we do that, we can add up the hours and we can use a ratio analysis comparing the hours used in one department versus the hours used in another department. And we can then uh, apply that out and apply out the depreciation to the appropriate department based on that ratio analysis. Utilities. Again, we might have the whole building. We might pay one utility bill. We don't pay utilities per floor, possibly. If we did, then that would be one way to go. If we don't, <laughs> then if we don't pay utilities per department and we pay one utility bill and we have three departments in it, how do we allocate the utilities? Again, another common way we might do that is that an easiest way would you would think would say the floor space occupied because you would think that larger floor space being occupied would then have more utility. Now, again, you might you might argue that that's not the case because you could have one department that uses a lot more uh, utility than others for some reason or another in some circumstance. And if that's the case, then you'd have to make some adjustment for that possibly in order to appropriately allocate the utilities. If all the departments you would think are just doing this normal stuff, the lights and whatnot in the in the offices, then you would think the floor space would be a relevant activity base to use. So just know these are going to be some common kind of ways that we can apply out uh, what we're looking for, of course, here is some type of activity base that's going to be related, a cost driver driving the cost that we have, some type of activity base that we can uh, quantify in some way and then compare departments so that we can have a ratio analysis comparing the relative use of the activity base from department to, to department compared to the total resulting in ratios or percentages that add up to 100 which we can then apply out the costs based on. So again, once you know this concept, then you can apply it and you know the activity base, then you can apply it to whatever activity base uh, is being used. As we allocate the indirect expenses out, recall that the service departments are gonna be something that we allocate indirect expenses to as well. And then we're gonna take the total of those service departments and we're gonna use them to allocate to the revenue generating departments as well. So something like the maintenance, we're going to say, okay, anything that needs to be applied to the maintenance that's indirect that should be applied to the maintenance department, we will apply to the maintenance department. Once the maintenance department has been completed, we know the cost of it. We're going to take that total cost for the maintenance department and apply it to uh, the rest of the department's revenue generation uh, departments uh, to complete the process. We'll use a similar basis in order to do that or a similar process to do that. We'll determine an activity base. We'll use that ratio process to apply out the entire service department to the relevant uh, departments to apply them out to with the similar or same ratio analysis, choosing an activity base that would be appropriate for that allocation.